If you want to be in with a chance to win a Nintendo Switch Lite console, we are currently doing a giveaway with the Arix Gaming Stream Team. Click the link in the description box down below to enter. Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Animal Crossing New Horizons. We're back with episode four, part number four of the Five Star Island build series. By now, you guys should know what this is all about. For those of you guys that missed it, I took my previous island, I completely flattened it, and we're now building a new island, and we're taking a lot of inspiration from The Legend of Zelda. And if you missed the previous episode or any of the episodes, you can find them linked down below. I've created a playlist dedicated for this series alone. So if you want to catch up or you've only just discovered this series and you want to see the progress so far, then go back and watch from episode episode one. But as a super quick recap, last episode we of course put some finishing touches to the Kakariko Village layout, the kind of top right hand corner residential quarter. It is not completely finished. As I said in the previous video, I want to save the sort of final design pass until the end. Ideally I want to go around the island and place things down and sort of get the general layout for most things and then we'll go and do like an object placing pass and put down trees and flowers and just kind of do all the necessary stuff to make it five star. So today's episode, today's focus is on the bottom left hand corner of the map because this time we're going to be building Gerudo Valley. So if you guys do enjoy this, then like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys have got any more ideas. As always, I'm taking suggestions from you guys throughout this series. You guys have had some great suggestions so far. If you guys have caught the previous episodes, you would have seen some of those already. And this week is picking up on that. Quite a few of you have actually suggested taking different aspects from Zelda games like Lake Hylia, Kakiri Forest, and Gerudo Valley. And since the uh, Gerudo Valley music in Ocarina of Time is one of my favorite, in fact, my absolute favorite Zelda tune, it is only fitting. But not only that, the actual Gerudo Valley layout, I'm speaking specifically Ocarina of Time, actually works quite well for Animal Crossing. So that's what we're gonna be building today. So the first thing I did, I decided to jump back over to the island designer to basically try and sort of, you know, loosely lay out how I was gonna kind of do it. Because what I decided to do was if you kind of cast your mind back to Ocarina of Time, Gerudo Valley, the actual layout, before that, there's a little bridge you can go across. Now, one of the really annoying things in Animal Crossing, bridges can only go across water. They can't span cliffs, which is really annoying because it would have been so cool to be able to link cliffs together and have like a much higher elevation. I know there's ways you can effectively make it look like that, but either way, what I decided to do was have a little river that I can basically build up to effectively simulate the bridge that you cross to get to the Gerudo Valley town. And then of course, after that, we're gonna build the main layout. So what I'm then gonna do is you can kind of see with the path, I'm probably gonna go from the airport and have the sort of central area and have the path snake around. So you can then go into Gerudo Valley and then eventually the pathway around the back that you would normally run to go and do the shooting range will actually lead up to Kokiri Forest later on. So yeah, I know the map isn't gonna actually correctly link together, but in my mind, it kind of works out. Also, it was kind of cool having it, you know, sitting on the beach because sand and whatnot. But anyway, that's basically the general idea. So, decided to kind of start by building this out by just laying down the initial river, just to try and sort of get a feel for this. I kept the river pretty close to the beach because what I wanted to do was try and avoid the mistakes I made with the Kakariko village segment where I sort of laid things out from the wrong side and then suddenly started to run out of space. But I do also want to factor in that I want to use the top left hand corner of the map for Kakiri Forest. So I don't want this to take up really much more than the kind of bottom quarter, if you see what I mean. I don't really want it to kind of go above that halfway line. So this is what I'm working with. The reason I chose Gerudo Valley is because, I mean, obviously partly because you guys suggested it, which is uh, you know awesome for the series, but also because when you look at the sort of tiered section, I can basically simulate this building structure with the cliffs. And what I'm thinking is if I pick say two or three houses and I embed them in the cliffs, then while yes, you can't cover the roof, it would have been really cool if I could have just embedded it in the rocks and then just cover the roof. I know you can't do that, but at least if I do this, I can then wear some of the doorways in the sort of Gerudo Valley town layout. You can kind of go into to obviously work your way into the dungeons. That can basically be where the houses are. And then if I build cliffs around it, it should sort of simulate this general building structure. There's also a couple of options I could do as you'll see as this progresses when it comes to sort of building up walls to try and simulate that. I do still need to look into, somebody suggested in the previous video, I can't actually remember the name off the top of my head, but somebody made a suggestion that you could actually use wooden panels with designs on. I still haven't got around to testing that out yet, but I do definitely want to look into that because that could be a good way to try and build up the look of walls alongside here. This is again another place where I could also use brick walls, like stone brick walls because you know, if I use them and place them along the edge of the cliff. Like one of my pet peeves so far in Animal Crossing is that a cliff face always has to have one square in front of it. Like you can't just build two vertical 
steps, should I say, like one above the other. There's always this staggered nature, which, you know, I guess it's partly because they want you to be able to walk around it, but I really wish you could have like a sheer cliff face. But anyway, I might be able to get around that again by building some walls around, different things like that. But initially the plan was to kind of start by laying it all out. I started with the central house because that is the one that basically faces you across the walkway. Now, again, if I was doing this slightly more accurately, technically speaking, you go up a staircase to get to like the raised area where all these buildings are. However, I am incredibly close to my incline quota. You can only have eight bridges and eight inclines. I have six in Kakariko Village alone. I'm using one incline in this build to try and simulate the slope. Now again, there isn't actually a staircase in here in the actual game, but because I can't have like a natural slope, I need to have something. So I've used a wooden staircase just because at least it sort of matches the sandy color. And this is basically gonna simulate this area of the map. So when you kind of climb up, you can then sort of go up to there. And I'm effectively saving my last eighth incline for the other side because what I'm thinking of doing as I mentioned at the beginning is having a pathway that snakes around sort of through the cliffs alongside the cliff that will basically kind of encase the castle later on and then when we get to the area which will be Kukiri Forest I'll then have the last incline going down into that into sort of a sunken area amidst all the trees so I need to save that last one so I can't actually have an incline going up this area so we're just going to deal with that. I've also got quite a wide area at the front sort of in front of the bridge which creates that sort of canyon feel for when you're going through and I'm also then going to kind of start laying down sand to try and create that deserty feel. Now of course once we had the first house down moving forward a couple of days we then had the opportunity to start building up the second elevation of the sort of building areas and this is where I'm going to start structuring the houses. Some of them I'm going to sort of place here sometimes I'm just going to use cliff walls I'm not necessarily going to have equal houses for numbers of doors because I still want to put some of them in uh, Kakiri Forest again but I think three houses in this sort of area is probably a good number because then I can sort of simulate the base area which is sort of the doorway you go through amidst the crates again anytime there are supposed to be crates i'm currently using wooden boxes until i find something that is better and then on the next elevation i'm going to have two houses next to each other to sort of create this next big main entrance and everything else is basically just going to be cliff faces with some kind of wall put around it later on but anyway that's kind of it for this episode that's a little rundown on the build so far i'm leaving you guys with a little bit more kind of building just to sort of show you how it's coming out but basically this is where we're sitting right now so in the next episode we'll of course be putting uh probably the finishing touches to this section this one isn't quite as involved because obviously the last one took a couple of weeks because obviously we had so many houses to move and so many inclines but this time around since there's only three houses and one incline it's a lot easier and quicker to build up the main things i still need to do are of course fill in all the cliffs around because what i basically want to do is have the cliffs in front of the village built up quite high and also some kind of pathway that snakes around to the sort of main entrance area kind of outside the airport so it all links together and then once I've got that in place filled in all the mountains and all the cliffs I should then have a better idea as to what space is left on the map so we can then turn our attention to the top left quarter and then start building out there. So that's it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, be sure to keep it locked. Remember every single Sunday so far, I'm dropping these new episodes. So next week, we'll finish the off Gerudo Valley, move on to the next section, and we're getting gradually closer to uh, a general kind of layout that I'm happy with. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys wanna chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.